years. And what we're seeing through the stock market, through all the fake manipulation, is the ability to keep this euphoria, this illusion alive for such a long time. And what we're starting to realize is that there are central banks, there are countries that have been purchasing a lot of stocks, a lot of tech stocks, keeping the market up. We understand that the Fed has a trading desk, which is trading and pumping money into the stock market. We understand that the numbers have been manipulated. They go back in time. They revise the numbers to make everything look fantastic back in time. And going forward, they take the numbers and they manipulate them to make it look like things are doing well. And something very interesting happened where I think a lot of people understand and realize that the internet, Facebook, uh, Google, they have these advertisements where uh, people click on them and uh, these companies, they sell the advertisement, they make revenue from this. And a lot of companies use this and this is their main way of bringing in revenue into the company. And this is how uh, the entire company is evaluated and this is how the stocks are continually moving up. And we know this for Facebook, we know this for Google and some of the other com uh, companies like Instagram, Instagram, Twitter and many others, they're really not doing as well as everyone wants them. Everyone wants to believe that they're doing. But What's very interesting is that this marketing individual, Keith Weed, who's the head of marketing of Unilever, and he oversees a budget of about $8 billion per year. And what they're starting to realize is that a lot of these advertising clicks are not in fact coming from humans. About 60% are coming from bots. And people you know, are scratching their heads saying, well, why does this matter? Well, it does matter because they did a little experiment. And basically what has happened here is that Procter and Gamble, they decided, you know something, let's cut a hundred million dollars in digital marketing. And once they did this, they wanted to see if there was an impact on sales, impact on what has been happening with their product. And they cut this and they saw zero impact impact on their growth it had no effect whatsoever and they started to do more experiments to figure out what was going on here and they whittled all this down and they started to realize that these clicks are not coming from humans now this is going to be a major problem going forward because a lot of people looking at the tech stocks facebook instagram youtube and many others and they're going to say well wait a minute are these revenues real? Something's wrong here. And if or when these corporations start to um, scale back their advertising, this is going to be a problem. And we can see that it is already starting. And I'm not talking about the YouTube ad boycott. I'm talking about these corporations looking at Facebook, looking at Twitter, looking at Instagram and saying, well, wait a minute, what we're spending here, is it really worth it and they're getting noticed that it really isn't and this is going to be a major problem going forward because at this point if you remove 60 percent of these clicks what they consider are bots they're left with 40 percent and most of these companies they're not going to be able to make it and this is going to be a major problem in the tech arena and for the stock market now, when we look at the economy here in the United States, what are we seeing? We're seeing the illusion being kept alive. Now, the way the illusion is kept alive is they keep everything pretty much static. They make it seem like things are improving, but when you manipulate, when you have hedge funds, investors, say, invest in homes, they can't continually do this. What happens is the pending home sales, the existing home sales, the new home sales, they go up, the next month they go down, the next month they go up. But really, when you look at it over time, it's really gone nowhere. Because in a normal free market economy where people are driving the economy, and we've seen this prior to 2008, everything continually moves up because there are more and more people coming into the market. When you have the central banks trying to control it, well, 
they can't do this in every aspect so you see the big ups and downs but actually the economy is going nowhere the housing sales are going nowhere and pretty much everything is going nowhere and this is what we have been seeing for the last many many years especially with home sales and we know that there's hedge funds and investment companies they've been investing quite a bit they've been buying up homes keeping them off the market renting them if they can and we see at this point that the housing market, existing home sales, pending home sales, new construction, well, it has really gone absolutely nowhere. And when we look at pending home sales right now, we can see the pace of home sales is now unchanged since May of 2015. Now, they were able to prop it up from uh, the Great Recession, and it fell a little bit, but basically it's been very very static and they really can't get it to move anywhere and we're starting to see that there are signs that home sales retail sales manufacturing all of this is starting to give way right now now there's a lot of soft data coming out and the soft data is saying that yes things are good i mean if we look at the da dallas fed activity they're showing an improvement now this is the soft data when we look at the hard data well the hard data is crashing so we have a complete and utter disconnect between soft data and hard data we're also seeing with the Chicago PMI it has plunged most since February 2015 to 58.9 this erased all of July surprise gains as new orders growth slowed and prices paid accelerated and when we look at the economy and we look at the real stats and I'm looking at John Williams at shadowstats.com and he really breaks it down very nicely in how the economy is doing and if we take what the corporate media is telling us and we look at what he has been basically um, calculating we can see there's a huge disconnect now freight index is continued in a low level non expansion it is down by 11.7 percent from its pre recession peak we see motor vehicle orders and shipments they have declined in June we see home sales related construction in the second quarter of 2017 well new home sales are realistically down negative 12.3 percent existing home sales are down negative 3.7 percent building permits are down negative 13 percent housing starts are down negative 21.9 percent Single units are down negative 7%. Multi units are down negative 47.3%. And what we're seeing right now is this huge downturn. Now, again, if you go by the Fed and the corporate media and the manipulative statistics, it makes it look like everything is fine. This is what's been keeping the euphoria continually improving and you know, reaching new heights. They, they want this to happen. They've done this back in 2008. They did it back prior to 2001 going back throughout time because they want everyone in the market and once everyone is in the market this is when they bring it down but the actual statistics and I'm not talking about the double seasonally adjusted statistics the revised statistics that they go back in time and make everything look fantastic even though it was absolutely awful we're looking at the calculations before the manipulation we're looking at unemployment before the manipulation and that's actually around 23 percent unemployment right now and what they've done over time is they have continually manipulated it very slowly to make everyone believe that it was getting better and we knew it wasn't making sense because when we looked at it we said okay when unemployment was at 10 percent we had less stores closing retail was still pretty darn good but as unemployment dropped nine, eight, seven percent, more stores were closing, retail sales were declining, it didn't go to online, that is a myth. And as we approached five percent, four point seven percent, this is the worst retail market we have ever seen. People are saving less money. And this is how you know that everything is completely manipulated because when the real world doesn't match up to the manipulation someone is lying and the real world that's not where the lie is it's with the government it's with the fed 
It's with those individuals that want you to believe that the illusion is alive. Now, remember, the central banks have been preparing for this crash. The governments around the world, they've been preparing for this crash. They've been keeping everyone in this illusion where they're using stress tests. They're telling you everything's fine. And we're seeing little anomalies here and there where we're seeing Home Capital Group, where that bank is having troubles. We see Banco Popular, a lot of Italian banks, Deutsche Bank. They're all having problems, and we understand now that the EU is going to freeze bank accounts so no one can take their cash out when things start going south. Now, remember, they're going to freeze the accounts way before they announce there's problems because they want to make sure that all that cash stays in there and they need it in there for the balance. Now, what's also very interesting is that the EU has a deposit insurance scheme. And basically, this might even result in a ban of cash. But what they're doing right now, and this is called the EU Single Resolution Board, they issued a statement with the exact title, Single Resolution Board collects 6.6 .6 billion euros in annual contributions to the Single Resolution Fund, now reaching 17 billion euros in total. Now, we need to look at this a little bit closer. They've been building this up for quite a while right now over a period of eight years and by 2023 they're hoping to have quite a bit in there now the target is intended to be at least one percent of covered deposits by the end of 2023 and there's 3,512 institution banks and investment firms that have been contributing to the fund now the goal the whole entire goal is to create an emergency safeguard that can be used as a as a a uh, measure of last resort and we can see right now that what they have in the SRF well this emergency safeguard can't cover anything think about this for a second there are over 1 trillion euros of non-performing EU loans Italy alone has about 276 billion euros in non-performing loans Greece Cyprus have NPL ratios of about 46 to 45 percent, Bulgaria, Croatia, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Portugal, Slovenia, Marine, Romania, all have NPL ratios between 10 and 20 percent. And in Greece, we can see nearly seven years, 13 austerity packages and three bailouts worth a running total of about 366 billion dollars. The Greek economy is still struggling. Now, even if the single resolution fund through its entire emergency fund of 17.4 billion euros at Greece, it wouldn't do a damn thing. It wouldn't save it. It wouldn't do anything. They don't have enough. Just like the FDIC, there is not enough. And this is why they're preparing to freeze accounts, to lock down the banks, and to do balance. And people say, you know, oh, what's the big deal? They can just continually print money. It's not going to be a problem whatsoever. They can raise the debt ceiling. Who cares? They've kept it going this long. They can keep it going much longer. Well, here's some interesting statistics here. U.S. federal spending is rising at a staggering $428 million per day. The U.S. federal tax revenue is only rising at $129 million per day. So the U.S. government at the federal level is spending about $300 million more per day than it is taking in via tax revenue. And let's not even talk about the interest on the debt. There is no way to keep this system alive unless the government continually borrows and borrows and borrows. And when they do this, the rest of the world is going to lose confidence in the dollar. And we're already seeing this. A lot of people say, where? Where are we seeing this? Why do you think other countries are trading outside of the dollar? Because they just hate you know, dealing with the U.S.? No, they understand that the dollar is going to crash. 
They understand they can't wait for the last minute. They need to protect themselves. This is why China, Russia, been trading without the dollar. Iran, Saudi Arabia is making a deal. Qatar is making a deal. India is making a deal. Many of these smaller nations are already making bilateral trade agreements to make sure that they are safe. Countries are building up on their gold stores. Actually, China, well, their gold reserves have surpassed 20,000 tons right now. All of this is being done because they understand and they realize that the dollar can only go so far before countries start to realize we are losing faith. Now, as the petrodollar collapses, which we are seeing happen right in front of our eyes, if you're paying attention, because we can see the Middle East, that is lost. These countries like Iraq, we went into Iraq, we went into Libya, we went into many of the other countries to make sure that these countries stayed on the dollar system where people, where uh, countries would come in and pay using the dollars to purchase oil. Iraq is already working with Iran for a pipeline and they're already becoming closer and closer to Iran where eventually they're going to be supplying them with natural gas. They're going to have a pipeline coming through. They're going to pay Iran not using the U.S. dollar. These countries are going to sell their natural resources not using the U.S. dollar. It's already happening. And when this happens, more and more countries are going to lose faith. When you lose faith in a paper currency, it is a complete disaster. This is where we are headed. And really, it's around the corner. So this euphoria of this economy, which is baked on based on fake data, based on a fake stock market, based on a gigantic illusion that they created, well, it's coming, crashing down around all of us. And a lot of people are not going to be ready for this. And this is why we need to understand that when this does happen, even if it's for two weeks, let's take a uh, the best case scenario that the system comes down, the market comes down, and it's two, three, maybe maybe a month out. How do you think people are going to react if it's 30 days of jobs being lost, high inflation, the market continually dropping, and the value of the dollar decreasing? People are not going to be able to handle this, especially when they're coming off this euphoria. Because while everything is okay, people are happy. People feel confident, secure in everything that they're doing. And in a snap of a finger, where everything falls apart, their world completely changes. Their mood completely changes. Their outlook completely changes. And this is what's going to happen as we go into this collapse. And people's reactions, well, we really don't know what they're going to be like. Because think about it. Yes, it's easy to say, well, if I lose my job and I don't have income coming in, I can get by on my savings. I can get by on looking for another job. What happens when there are no other jobs. I remember back in the 70s, people had a very difficult time finding work in the beginning. This time around, as we saw back in 2008, there might not be work for a long time. If they have to freeze your bank account, what funds are you actually getting out? If your property taxes are skyrocketing because the municipalities can't make ends meet, how do you stay in your home? How do you keep the electric on? How do you survive through all of this? And when this hits home, people are not going, not going to know what to do. Their reaction and what they think they're going to do is going to be completely different on what is really happening 
And many people are just going to freak out. I mean, think about the Great Depression. People were jumping from buildings. They didn't know what to do. Everything was lost. So this is why I've been out there. This is why many people have been out there saying that, yes, this is coming. We don't know when, but you need to be ready and prepared for this because when it comes, you don't want to be one of those people. You want to have some type